Today's recipe calls for Szechuan chili powder. I'm gonna show you how to make the best condiment ever, also known as chili oil. This stuff is super easy to make and it's really versatile. So with that said, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is start cutting all of our fresh aromatics for our chili oil. This whole recipe comes down to personal preference, so use as much as your little heart desires. We're going to start off with 8 pieces of medium to large size garlic cloves. Find the best way to peel them is to cut the root end off first and then cut them in half. Once you do this, the peel or the garlic skin should fall right off. Now that you have all of your vampire repellent peeled, you're going to use the broad or the heel of your blade to give it a little smashy smash. You don't want to Hulk smash them, you want to just smash them lightly so they're slightly crushed. This will help release some of the oils and juices that they hold to give us more flavor from them. The next ingredient we're going to cut is three medium to large sized shallots, or alternatively one small red onion will also do the trick. You'll peel and cut off the tip of the shallots. You're going to cut your shallots into about 1 8 inch small sections, starting from the tip cutting towards the root of the veg. You don't want to cut these too small or they're are going to end up burning during the cooking process. If you're going to use a red onion instead of a shallot, you're going to cut the top off, which is the opposite end of the root. And once you have the top cut off, you're going to cut it in half and give it a quick peel. Then we're going to repeat the same process of cutting it into that 1 8 inch thickness. The last item in our aromatic mix is a piece of ginger that's roughly 1.8 ounces or 52 grams worth. Like all the rest, we also need to peel the skin off. You may not be able to find a piece of ginger that's this exact weight. You want to shoot for something that's roughly small to medium in size range. The best way to peel the skin off is by using a spoon to scrape off all the peel. It comes off really easy this way. Do your best to get as much of it off as possible. It doesn't need to be perfect though. To be completely honest, I'm not a huge fan of raw ginger. I think it's a bit strong and pungent in flavor, but by cooking it, it'll kind of knock that edge off of it and I'll bite the bullet because I know it's going to bring a ton of great flavor to our chili oil. Now that your ginger is skinless, we need to cut it into pieces that are about a quarter inch thick. The bigger, the better. Having larger pieces will make it easier to fish out, which that'll make more sense later on in the video. And peeling our ginger will expose it to the oil and heat, which in turn will make it easier for it to penetrate, giving us more flavor. Now that we have all of our aromatics cut, we can move on to the next step. Grab a medium sized saucepan or something large enough that'll be able to hold two cups or 473 mils of a neutral tasting oil of your choice. I went with avocado oil. I think it has the best taste and mouthfeel compared to some of the other oils. Also, when measuring liquids, you always want to use a liquid measuring cup for the best results. Just a little pro tip for you. Now that you've added your oil from one holding device to another, I'm going to toss all of our aromatics into the pan of oil. Give everything a quick mix to coat it in that liquid fat that you decided to use. Next, diligently throw the pan of goods over medium high to high heat to start this cooking marathon. On. Once it's on the heat source, you want to keep a close eye on it. We want our oil to come to a small rage boil. We want to see it bubbling pretty hard. This initial rage bubble will get the party started for us. Once you see the oil bubbling, which means things are starting to be fried, you want to immediately turn the oil down. You may need to take your pan off the heat source as well to help stop the rage bubble. Turn the heat down to about a low medium or low heat. By turning the oil down to a low heat, we are essentially confining all of our aromatics. This the same method from the confit garlic video. Now that the oil is becoming super flavorful, it's time to get the dry spices ready. Grab a large holding apparatus that is heat proof. This is really important to do so because we'll be adding hot oil to it. A great option is a stainless steel bowl or you can also use a heat proof glass jar but I highly recommend the stainless steel bowl. The first thing we'll measure out is one cup or roughly 108 grams worth of Szechuan chili powder. You should be able to find this at your local Asian market. If you can't, you can also find it online. This recipe will make a good amount of chili oil. You can easily cut this recipe in half if needed. The next thing you're going to add is one teaspoon of chili powder. This is more for color than taste. It'll help give us that nice ruby red color. Next, we'll add half a teaspoon of sea salt. Once you've added that, give all the dry spices a quick flick of the wrist to mix everything together. Now that the dry spices have been measured, we'll give the oil a quick peek to see how things are coming along. You'll notice 
notice that the garlic and ginger are starting to turn a golden brown color which is awesome and that's what we want. At this point our oil has been at a low simmer for an hour. This is a low and slow process in total. This will take about two hours. We want to do it this way so we can impart the most flavor possible into our oil by slowly cooking the ingredients. After checking on the oil we need to get a few more dry spices measured out. The first one is two tablespoons of white sesame seeds. If you want to get the most flavor out of them you can dry toast the sesame seeds to make them more nutty in flavor. The next is three medium sized bay leaves and two whole star anise. A little pro tip is to look for this brand of dry spices. They are super affordable and will get the job done. Especially if these are some spices or ingredients that you won't use that much this is a great option. At the one hour mark of cooking you want to add the bay leaf and star anise. You can also add this at the beginning to extract more flavor from them if you wish. Now that those are in the bubbly oil bath we'll keep cooking everything for an additional hour or until all of our aromatics have become golden brown in color. In the meantime go play yourself in a few games of tic-tac-toe but also remember during your winning and losing streak of tic-tac-toe you want to periodically check on the oil to ensure that nothing's burning. Once you see that the ginger and garlic are a sweet golden brown you want to pull them out of the oil this way they won't burn and ruin our oil. This is why we cut them in large pieces this way we could find them and fish them out a whole lot easier. You want to use a fine mesh strainer for this. Once you have the G and G in the strainer you'll lightly press on them so we can extract all the oil out of them. Save the garlic and eat them as a nice little snack. You can do the same for the ginger but it's really not that good in my opinion. Now that those are done we'll continue to cook the shallots until they also become a nice golden brown as well. When pulling the shallots out you want to ensure you get as much of the small floaties as possible. This way nothing is left behind that has the potential of burning. When pulling the shallots you also want to pull out the dry spices as well. We'll repeat the same process and lightly push on the shallots. This way we can extract as much oil out of them as possible as well. Also save the shallots. This makes for a super tasty snack. Now that we have an oil that's super flavorful we're going to slightly turn the heat up on it. We want to bring the oil up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 148 degrees Celsius. We want to bring up the temperature on our oil slowly. Trust me on this one. I say trust me on this one because the first time I made this I rushed it and I ended up burning the oil and I ruined the whole thing so I had to restart it all. Wah, wah, wah. It was a sad day. You want to do your best to not let your oil get any higher than the 300 Fahrenheit or the 148 Celsius. It might go a little higher by a few degrees which is fine but getting it too hot isn't. When the oil is coming up to temp it helps to add a fresh piece of garlic to it. Doing this will help prevent the oil from burning by giving the oil something to cook while it comes up to temp. Now that we've played Goldilocks and hit the right temp, we'll add small bits of oil to the Szechuan chili powder at a time. You'll add roughly a quarter cup or 59 mils of oil each time you add some in. Once you've added the first bit, you'll give everything a good mix together to coat everything in that hot oil. After the quick mix, you'll add the sesame seeds and then you'll add the next set of oil. You'll keep doing this in, in stages until all the oil has been added to the bowl. The reason why we do this in steps is because we don't want to burn our Szechuan chili powder or turn it into a smoky flavor. We would end up losing all of the aromatic flavors that we worked so hard for. Adding the hot oil to the Szechuan chili powder will slightly toast it, pull out its flavor and the natural oils that it holds. Once you've added all the oil, you'll add back the dry spices. This way over time we can get more flavor from them. After that's been done, we'll let our chili oil hang out in room temperature weather and let it completely cool down before we put it away. And a little pro tip, you want to periodically give it a stir to help the heat release from it. This way it cools down a lot faster. A little pro tip is to wipe down all the equipment that oil oil was used for with a paper towel. This will help make it easier to clean and it'll also prevent you from putting oil down your drain because oil and grease is terrible for your drains and paper towels are a lot cheaper than fixing some pipes. Give the oil a quick taste test and adjust the seasoning as needed. Grab your favorite holding apparatus for your chili oil and glass jar is the perfect option for this. Try to avoid using any type of plastic containers. The red oil will stain the plastic and it just looks a lot better 
better in a jar anyways. Divide up the chili oil and the dry spices into the jars. Scrape the bowl clean with a rubber spatula. We don't want to waste any of that good stuff. Put a half sheet tray down for easy cleanup. Add this to some fried eggs or some cheap store bought ramen packets to elevate some nudes. Whatever you decide to do, just enjoy. Now that our chili oil is done, let's give it the old taste of So looking at it, it came out nice and aesthetically pleasing. It's that deep, rich, ruby red color. Then we get a little pop or a contrasting color from our white sesame seeds. And it smells super aromatic from all of our dry spices and that garlic shallot and ginger. It just smells and looks super tasty. So let's give it a try. Our chili oil came out super tasty. There's a ton of flavors going on for it. Overall, it's really well balanced, but in each bite, it's a little bit different. So on the first bite, you might get a little bit of ginger and garlic flavor. And the next one, you might get some of those dry spices and a little bit of shallot flavor as well. The sesame seeds bring a little bit of nuttiness to the table. And of course, it's a bit spicy, but not too spicy. It's just perfect. Texture wise, it's nice and smooth on the palate. It's not greasy, even though it's oil. And the sesame seeds and chili powder itself brings a little bit of crunch to the table, which is great. Overall, this stuff is just banging. This recipe is super easy to make. All it takes is a bit of patience, but it's well worth it in the end. And you can make this more complex if you wish and add some more dry spices, or you can keep it simple like I did. This stuff is perfect on fried eggs, fried potatoes, on some tofu, your favorite noodle dish, or even on some ramen. There's endless opportunities with this stuff. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching. And I've eaten quite a bit of this stuff and had spicy food last night, so I should probably go to the store and get something for my little tummy and some ice cream just to be safe. So we'll see you on the next one. Chili oil came out. Chili oil. 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 Our chili oil. 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 Oil.